All right, I've got two shooters in sight. I'm going to stay with them. They are at uh, 4 and Everett, walking uh, northbound. Well, first at five, a rare look at the gun violence epidemic plaguing the Rose City. A police aircraft flying above Old Town Chinatown, capturing a violent confrontation, multiple shooters, flashes of light, and dozens of bullets flying. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm David Molko. Police say the shooters there fired more than 80 rounds, though remarkably nobody was hurt. Let's bring in Mike Benner outside Central Precinct. And Mike, this video really gives us a chilling firsthand glimpse of what this neighborhood has been facing. Walk us through how police were able to capture this all as it unfolded. Yeah, David, it's not unusual for the Portland Police Bureau airplane to be up and flying. And on Friday morning, it was flying in the Old Town Chinatown area looking for people who were reportedly armed with guns. That is when the shooting started. And as you're about to see, this was no minor shooting. It was serious. 3830, he got shots being fired, active shots being fired. A rare look at a gun battle in northwest Portland's Old Town Chinatown. All right, I've got two shooters in sight. I'm going to stay with them. A Portland Police Bureau airplane tracks a shootout between two men early Friday morning near Northwest 4th and Davis. It breaks my heart. It shows no respect. Guthrie Murray has lived in the area for decades. He can't make sense of the shooting that left behind more than 85 shell casings. And as you can see in the daylight, noticeable damage, although nobody was hurt. Sad to see what's happening. It's sad. I don't know. I don't know if it's making sense, but it's, it's very, um, so you can see my emotion. It takes a lot from me. The shooting captured from above is the latest in a string of crimes in the Old Town Chinatown neighborhood. On July 29th, a teen was shot and killed near Northwest 5th and Cooch. Two nights later, a man was injured in a separate shooting near Northwest 4th and Cooch. And on the morning of August 2nd, a woman was stabbed to death near Northwest 5th and Davis. A neighbor telling us this at the time. So whatever's going on right now is clearly not working. It's escalating. It's getting worse. I'm sure the heat isn't making it any better. You know, that's definitely going to dehydrate people and make them more, you know, delirious and whatnot. They're shooting each other, dude. Officers did manage to arrest two men for the shooting caught on camera. They seized two guns as well. Neighbors are relieved, but can't help but wonder what's next. I don't know what's going to happen. I really am afraid of the future. All right, the two men arrested for that shooting caught on camera are identified as 29-year-old Travis Gators III and 24-year-old Tamarje Polk. They're facing a number of charges, including felon in possession of a firearm and unlawful use of a weapon. To David. state the obvious here, really afraid of the future. They're hearing that. That does not bode well. Mike Benner, thank you, Mike. And as Portland police struggle with staffing shortages, the city's clean and safe crews are stepping up to help. That includes extended hours and new a new non-emergency safety number. So we caught up with a crew today in Old Town as they picked up garbage and helped those living on the streets. They pointed out to us, though, they do much more than that, including providing another resource for local businesses who may have security concerns. Now, on top of the new number, which will give you in a bit, the Clean and Safe program is hoping to expand its presence 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We help people out when they're, they need food or when they're thirsty. Like, sometimes they carry like five, six bottles of water. And we're serving as kind of a, a triage uh, for a very understaffed police bureau in, in, a, in a challenging time. Well, if you're downtown, you can now call Clean and Safe at this number on your screen, 503-388-3888. Again, this is for non-emergency security issues, including people sleeping in doorways or disrupting businesses. If it is an outright emergency, you'll want to call 911. Depending on the nature, your call might be routed to police or, of course, to Portland Street Response. We'll have a look at this video where a driver crashed into a FedEx office store. Portland police tell us they believe the person behind the wheel here had some type of medical emergency. The crash was around 2.15 this afternoon, southeast Washington, uh, across from Mall 205. Nobody here seriously hurt, but one of the two people hit by some debris was taken to the hospital. The driver has not been charged. We're also following developing news on the FBI apparently searching former President Donald Trump's home, Mar-a-Lago. Trump saying it was unannounced. FBI agents broke into a safe. He is now slamming the Justi Justice Department Democrats and calling the United States a, quote, third world country. 
The Justice Department would not comment on whether the U.S. Attorney General had personally authorized the search. It is unclear what the FBI was actually looking for, but the Justice Department has been investigating Trump for apparently taking 15 boxes of classified material to Mar-a-Lago. Much more coming up on NBC Nightly News at 5.30. Well, we are keeping a very close eye on the Washington primary results, in particular the third congressional district where the race for the second place spot is in recount territory. Take a look here. Congresswoman Jamie Herrera Butler still in second, but barely 22.63% of the vote. Trump endorsed Joe Kent, I think about 300 votes behind. That looks right, give or take. But this is updating literally minute to minute because Clark County about to report tonight. They have about 30,000 ballots left to process. We expect about half of those, about 15,000 votes to come in any second now, and those totals to likely change the rest of it tomorrow. Of course, uh, you can see Marie Glusen Camp Perez, the Democrat, far out in front, 31%. The AP projecting she will move on to November, so it's a question of that second spot. Remember, this is a top two primary. We will update you as the count comes in. Well, let us take you outside on this Monday afternoon with, I'm going to say, a seasonal and temperate 88 degrees over the Rose City. Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino back with us tonight. I mean, Matt, what a difference from 24 hours ago. You know, we hit 100 degrees yesterday. We're in the 90s on Saturday, so it's a super hot weekend. And this heat wave ended a little early if you consider the end of a heat wave being temperature staying below 90 degrees, which we did today only by two degrees, but we'll take 88 over 100 any day of the week. Still triple digits over in Eastern Oregon there, and the difference is really pretty impressive. I mean, we're running 11 degrees cooler right now compared to this time on Sunday. 16 degrees cooler though, McMinnville, 17 degrees cooler in Salem in the coast. 20 degrees coolers. They had a hot Sunday as well. So let's see what's going on. Uh, we no longer have a heat advisory over the Willamette Valley. And even out through the gorge, you don't pick that up to get it to the east of Hood River. But there is a fire weather warning out and it extends all the way into Wednesday morning, which is pretty long duration for a fire weather warning that also uh, slides on down into Northern California as well. And this one is not because of low humidity or gusty winds, although there will be low humidity, but because of the potential for new fire starts with lightning. Now this is live from one of our two sky cams at Timberline Lodge looking south. And you can see Mount Jefferson here and these are thunderstorms. OK, so they are building over the Cascades. But when we look at Doppler radar to pinpoint where they are, they're actually south of Mount Jefferson, closer to Mount Batchelor, kind of between the two volcanoes there. And they are moving north, so they're not super close to Mount Hood yet, but we're going to see more development tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, and even into Wednesday morning. I think the thunderstorms and showers will be much more widespread, so we'll be watching that carefully. But as far as the heat goes, Cooler all week will stay below 90. Showers and thunderstorms are possible even in the valley tomorrow night or Wednesday morning. And of course, we're tracking that elevated fire danger. David? Yeah, a lot to look out for. See you in a bit, Matt. We have some new details tonight, by the way, on one of the four people who died in the McKinney fire. That's the fire in Northern California, just over the state line. The U.S. Forest Service saying Kathy Schutman, a Klamath National Forest lookout, did not make it out. Schutman lived in Klamath River for nearly five decades. She'd worked as a lookout since 1974. Well, an update tonight on the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. The U.S. Senate has passed the $430 billion bill. Vice President Kamala Harris breaking that 50-50 tie. The bill invests in climate change mitigation, clean energy, including incentives to buy electric cars. It also extends Affordable Care Act health insurance subsidies. The White House says the bill, quote, tackles inflation by lowering the deficit and lowering costs for regular families, end quote, now heads to the House. And today, Oregon Senator Ron Wyden called that bill the biggest investment in climate change ever, while also highlighting its health care investments. Now, the bill would allow Medicare to directly negotiate with drug companies, which can then lower the cost of prescription drugs for seniors. AARP Oregon says Medicare has been legally prohibited from doing that, and this bill would be a much needed and, in their words, welcome change. I think if we can get uh, the drug prices lower, more Americans can um, sigh, of, you know, sigh of relief. On average, older Americans take about four prescription drugs, and that can add up. What I have been working on is going to be a seismic shift in the relationship between big pharma and taxpayers. Big pharma is not just going to be able to charge anything they want. There is a lot in the act, by the way. It also adds federal funds to the fight against both wildfires 
and drought. Well, Wall Street was relatively flat on Monday after last Friday's strong jobs report really beat expectations, though speaking of jobs, Industry after industry continues to really suffer a shortage of workers. Let's bring in Brian Clerkley. Brian, you got a tour of a program here at Portland Community College that is training people to become maritime welders. Hey, David, that's right. The two certificates are 11 weeks each. One is a maritime welding certificate, which involves the ship industry. The other certificate is ship fitting, where students learn how to build parts for ships. And starting in January of 2023, Portland Community College will offer these new certificates. People can sign up now on the PCC website. And these jobs can pay six figures or more. And instructors say more and more women are getting involved in a traditionally male dominated industry. Alex Cuevas is learning how to weld using the same equipment she would in her future career. And so I genuinely just thought it would be cool to be one of the females to get in on the ground and kind of like start the culture of getting women involved in the field. Welding instructor Todd Barnett thinks stereotypes about welding being an industry for men have kept women out for a long time but he says PCC is actively trying to diversify the field and the welding program also works with people who have been incarcerated or have records. So if anyone's interested, they can go to the PCC website and we'll have links on our page, kgw.com as well. David. Yeah, Brian Clerkley in the newsroom. Thanks, Brian.